24 hours later. Um, I thought it was just causing a lot of waves in the, in the, in the Twitter, in the, in the community. 24 hours later, Sam calls me and says, hey, CZ, can, you, can we talk? Mm, okay. I thought he was going to do an OTC deal, right? I thought, I thought he was going to ask, hey, CZ, why don't we do an OTC deal? Then we can put all the negative comments uh, out, then confidence is restored. I thought he, would, he wanted to do that. But instead, he just said, look, we, 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 uh, we have much bigger troubles. Hey guys, welcome back to the Library of Wealth. Today we have Binance co-founder and CEO CZ giving us his take on the collapse of FTX and the damage it's caused to the crypto market. CZ outlines what ultimately led to FTX filing for bankruptcy and what effect it's had on the confidence and credibility in the industry. He believes the implosion of FTX is a negative event in the short term with consumers being hurt financially and having their money frozen in the downfall. CZ says that going forward, there's a lot of work to do to rebuild trust, to which Binance currently has 100% reserve for user assets. However, FTX's former CEO, Sam Bankman fried did not hold the same sentiment. Let's check out this latest interview with CZ as he talks about what went wrong with his industry competitor as a credit crunch sent FTX into an inescapable spiral, which led to the final deal that never went through. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. From our perspective, the deal, never, the deal did not make sense from a number of uh, fronts. From a financial perspective, it's, it's a big hole. Uh, from, use, from new users, FTX, we have very high overlap. We, they, we cover all the regions they cover, uh, and they have much less users than us. Um, from a technology or product perspective, uh, I think we have a superior product. They don't have anything that we don't have. I think we've just seen well, the, another very big player going down. You know, a, couple, a few months ago, there was Luna, uh, three arrows. Uh, Luna was big. Three arrows was smaller, and then with Celsius, Voyager, they're, they're even smaller. But then FTX is big. So uh, with such a big player going down, we're, I think we're seeing 30, 40 billion dollars of value that that's in FTX valuation that was before that they raised that. Um, plus a, quite a quite a number, quite a few billion dollars of a user funds that's evap well, that's kind of gone. Um, so with this type of uh, events happening, it's devastating for the industry. Um, so a lot of uh, consumer confidence is shaken, um, and I think basically we've been set back a few years. Um, now we, we have, regulators rightfully will scrutinize this industry much, much harder, um, which is probably a good thing, to be honest. Before, the regulations are much more focused on KYC and AML. I've always been saying, look, you've got to focus on the exchange operations. Um, so uh, business models, proof of reserves, uh, where, the user, where, where, where the user funds. So I think we'll come into a lot more scrutiny on those fronts, but actually that's good for the industry. Um, so um, having that setback, short term is very painful for a lot of retail investors, that's on FTX, um, et cetera. Um, but we feel that pain, um, but longer term, I think that this is a, a, another wake up call to say, hey look, we're in a new industry, there's a lot of risks and we need to learn how to deal with those risks and how to build a much healthier industry. The problems were there way longer, right? So like this problem wasn't created in the last three days. So basically, FTX is misappropriating user funds. They were, um, they were taking user funds to do other things. Um, and um, I think the trigger uh, was like a week ago, there was a Coindesk article. And then my team says, well, hey, CZ, we still have, this, we still have a lot of FTT coins. Like what? Should we sell it? Uh, sure, why not? So the next day, there was a big transaction reported by Wear Alerts uh, saying that like 580 million US dollars worth of FTT was transferred to Binance.com. And my team said, CZ, this is our transfer. I was like, well, really, you sure? Said, yeah, he's sure. Um, and should we be, should, like there was, there was discussions in the community and should we be transparent about it? He's like, yeah, sure, we should be transparent about it. And then he said, CZ, you should write a tweet because uh, we don't, like the in what we'll call the interns, our PR team says, we don't really know how to write this particular one. This is quite, it's quite sensitive. So I was actually just going out to meet two of my friends who actually also came to Indonesia uh, now. I was on my way out to meet with them. And then, um, so I just wrote a tweet in, uh, in, in a few minutes, but I wanted to explain like, how do we have this much, right? So we can't just have 580 million dollars worth of FTT all of a sudden. We got it, we didn't buy it from secondary markets. We got it as a transaction uh, of our exit, uh, equity exit out of FTX uh, um, a year and a half ago, which was publicly reported. Um, so I said that, and then I didn't know my phone would blow up like uh, over the rest of the evening. 
So, and I also didn't know, like, no, the second day I said, look, I didn't know that was, this is the, um, I think the word we used was um, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. CZ says the real victim in the downfall of FTX is the crypto industry as a whole. He feels it's clear SBF lied to investors, venture capitalists, and employees, and with the exception of maybe a small group at the top who were in on the plot, overall it shouldn't be blamed on any single person other than Sam. Our original intention was to let's save the users. But then the news of um, uh, misappropriating user funds and especially US regulatory agencies' investigations, we're like, okay, we can't touch that anymore. So, um, and then we said, look, and then as soon as, we, as soon as I, understood we couldn't touch it anymore. I said, let's make that announcement as quickly as possible because uh, we don't want to say, a, we don't want to do a slow no. We want to do, if we're going to do a no, we do a quick no. Um, that's one of my principles in, in business. Um, so then this way we don't drag them, we don't drag on uh, for a long time. And then we also remove any uncertainty or doubt in the community because as you can see, when we were, the deal was going on, not going, well, the deal was happening, the price was, crypto was dropping. Uh, uncertainty is actually worse than negative news. So when the news is out, everybody knew, okay, this is where we are. Um, so, so we said, look, mm, let's announce it as quickly as possible. So we announced it. Um, and then after we announced it, I've been trying to keep quiet to the extent possible. So um, I didn't appear on any TV interviews, etc. But this was arranged like, you know, weeks ago. As one of the largest players in the industry, um, the, we have to lead by example. So I think the number one thing we have to do is be much, much more transparent. So um, anything we can do to increase transparency, we need to we need to do so uh, proof of reserves um, proof of reserves is going to take a couple of weeks um, mainly due to the vendor being very busy we're like okay let's do that but before that let's publish all of our code wallet addresses they were pretty public before anyway so we published yesterday um, six top coins which covers actually 80 90 percent of our uh, of the user funds um, so now people can see on one page uh, which addresses are the code wallets and um, anything that we can do to, to Im Im improve transparency. And I think um, uh, we also want to educate regulators all around the world. How do you do audits on crypto exchanges? Not just KYC ML, which is important, but how do you check the code wallets? How do you do user balance reconciliations? How do you check transaction logs? Um, how, how do you do use on-chain uh, monitoring tools to do this? So um, all of these things uh, we do internally. We do real-time reconciliations uh, across multiple aspects so that we can try it. And if any balance goes off, we get alerted in real time. So can, should, we, we think, should we make those kind of systems public? Um, so um, I think all of these things we need to do as an industry, which actually in, on the long term, I think will make the industry much healthier. So regulators, good or bad? Need it or not need it, and how should how should it play a role? Um, yeah, I think there's two topics there. Uh, number one is I think regulators are definitely need it. Um, I don't think our society is advanced enough to live in a, to live in a world without rules. So once we have rules, uh, then that's that's right. Without what regulations are, somebody have to make some rules. So, um, but doesn't mean all the rules are good. It doesn't mean all the rules are bad. So good rules are good, bad rules are bad. Um, the, the rules need to be sensible. Uh, if the rule says, hey, uh, we're just going to ban crypto altogether in Indonesia, that's one type of rule. That's, I think that's obviously going to be bad. Um, if we say anything goes, um, that's also not so good uh, in general. There will be a lot of scammers, a lot of uh, guys doing, doing business in a bad way and cause a lot of damage. So we need to find the balance. CZ admitted that he had intended to explore a lifeline for FTX in the interest of affected users, but due diligence carried out after signing a letter of intent quickly highlighted bigger problems than Binance had imagined. A couple days later, the deal was subsequently scrapped and FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, sending shockwaves through the cryptocurrency and wider financial ecosystem. Looking ahead, CZ says, even given the size of the FTX debacle, the industry should survive, if not thrive. With Bitcoin price suppression ongoing in light of the FTX crash, an already bearish trend has only strengthened. However, many crypto analysts believe that Bitcoin's ability to hold current price levels in the face of a major black swan event show that the popular cryptocurrency is conveying strength. What do you think about Binance CEO CZ's take on the collapse of FTX and where the crypto market is headed next? Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.